Whew. Oh, my goodness. It is cold out here. Well, good evening, good people. I'm Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I finally remembered to refill the propane tanks like Hank Hill. I had four of them today because I was out from a barbecue grill, from a smoker, and I was on the last leg of my one out here for the um, fire pit. You know, last bit, I could tell it was about to run out last night, and I did not want to run out. And I've got my battery charged on my cell phone, so I can actually speak and finish up today like I want to. Because, you know, it gets kind of close on the edge, and then all of a sudden, it starts getting dark. And if it runs out completely, you lose the recording. And everybody knows I'm a one-take guy, you know. The one thing I will say about me, and you know, some people will say I'm just lazy because I don't retake. I, I, um, I could never work for, not that anybody would offer me a job. I couldn't work for uh, a TV company or anything like that for ESPN because I could never read a script. I could never read the teleprompter. Um, Everything I do is just me sitting there having a conversation. And shout out to Troy Daniels. Troy called me this evening and said that he's going to start doing some live streams and stuff and was trying to set up and get some tips and things uh, to do this. And I'm going to say, um, and I call, you know, called and talked to him and gave him some tips and stuff. So he's going to start doing some college football and some games and things. And you know, I, I gave him the little bit of knowledge that I have, and I, by all means, I'm not going to say that I am the the one to 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 learn, but I'll be more than happy to offer any words of advice to anybody. But I will say that this ain't easy to get here because no matter what you do, there's always going to be people who won't do this but will be the first ones to critique you and tell you you suck. And that's one of those things where I tell people, you have to understand you need to have a thick skin. You have to have a thick skin because you will hear all kinds of stuff. You get called everything but a child of God. But consistency and being you is the key. It just is. In fact, in life, that's worse to be to live by. And I will say something my wife has always said that was reiterated by a billionaire yesterday I saw. And that is, love what you do and do what you love, and that's how you will make it. And no truer words have ever been spoken, because if you truly do love something, you will give it your full effort. And that's what I always try and do at life. I won't ever say that I have all the advantages of, of being good looking or well spoken or any of those things, but I will say that I will work my ass off with something that I want. You can see that here with YouTube. You can see that when I'm building something. You can see that with the Red Brick House. I hope you see it with my family and my relationships and my friendships because if you give full effort on something, you will reap benefits now this week here's where it's interesting to me because it has been chilly you know when i came back home um the other day on saturday it was snowing in the shenandoah valley we got a couple inches of snow it's been kind of chilly today you know it was kind of windy yesterday and kind of a wind chill right now it's uh i think about 37 degrees or so it's kind of chilly, but of course, it's middle of December. That's the way it's supposed to be. But here's the thing that's kind of crazy, and sometimes in life, you get lucky when you're not supposed to. I can turn this down just a little bit. The crazy thing in Buffalo, I remember last year when they had the lake effect snows that were crazy. I don't know if you remember when they were having fans that were volunteering with snowmobiles 
to basically dig out the, the Buffalo Bill players to get them to the airport. You, you think about seeing pictures where the fans, where you get free tickets if you just help to dig out the stadium. Buffalo has a home field advantage like crazy. You know, you remember the old shots of Jim Kelly and the Buffalo Bills and that snow just coming through. This year, and I've been watching every single day, the weather since Saturday in Buffalo. In Buffalo, I saw the temperature. It's been hovering around 47 to 46. Now they're saying 48 and cloudy. Earlier today, they were saying 46 and light rain. It's Wednesday, so it's getting closer and closer to being correct. But they were saying at the moment, the high temperature, 48, and the low of 38. Now, it's chilly right now. It's cold right now. But this right now is colder than it will be in Buffalo, New York. Is that crazy? You know, because we know the Cowboys used to play in, inside AT&T. They're not a cold weather team. But if you're telling me in Buffalo, it's going to be 47, 48, 49 degrees. Dude. Wow. Now, the odds makers have Buffalo as a two and a half point favorite. Some places one and a half. Buffalo will be desperate because they're trying to hang on to their playoff lives. And this will probably be the best quarterback remaining for the Cowboys. And this is an opportunity for the Cowboys to really continue this drive. If they can get this win right here, you look at it and you say the Cowboys could win all of their games going forward. And maybe the Eagles slip up. Maybe the 49ers slip up. You never know. You never know with the NFL from one week to the next when a team isn't playing great, all of a sudden goes on a three-game loop streak like San Francisco did. You never know when your star player could hurt their ankle like Miami's Tariq Hill did. It's a crazy thing about football. Everything is literally week to week. We can look at the season and see that almost – Every week, it's a brand new flavor in your ear. Miami was that team at one point. The Eagles had been that team all season. Everybody's talking about was great, even though they were just barely winning. Then the 49ers, when they beat the Cowboys, they were that team. And then they went on a three-game lose streak. And then it was back to the Eagles. And then the, the uh, Josh Allen and crew came back around again. Of course, it was Pat Mahomes and crew. And you see that everybody who's kind of risen up there has dropped down. This has been a crazy season. There's nobody that's going to be wire to wire. Now, the big talk right now is Dak Prescott, Josh Allen. And I'll go on record and say I have been a guy who's always said that Josh Allen is overrated. You know, I remember having conversations with my man, Game Time, who said, you know, if it was head to head, and I, I would take Josh Allen over Dak Prescott. And that's fine. That's his opinion. Uh, listening to speak. You know, now all of a sudden, Joy Taylor is now praising Dak Prescott and saying that, you know, he's a, an elite quarterback, which I'm kind of surprised to say here. But I guess she's gotten beat down so much and it's staring her in the face that she looks like a freaking idiot when you constantly say that kind of stuff. The question was, who is the better quarterback in this game? Well, we'll find out on Sunday. But as I look at the numbers, now here's the thing. There's perception and then there's reality. People will say, Josh Allen, he's got the cannon arm. You know, he's got that ability where he can run over you. and He can do, you know, things that Dak Prescott can do. And he's living off of getting to one AFC championship. That's where people will say, oh, you're a winner. Now, what will be interesting, hypothetically, hypothetically, I'm wondering, I'm asking this for a friend. Let's say the Dallas Cowboys end up being the number two seed. 
Let's say they go play in the wild card game. They win that game. Let's say, you know, they go to the division round. They win that game. And let's say they play the San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Championship game. Let's just say hypothetically, and the Cowboys lose. Will Dak Prescott get respect because he made it to the NFC Championship game like Josh Allen did? Or will they still trash Dak and say Dak sucks and can't, you know, he can't make it to the Super Bowl? Because I guarantee you that the bar will move. Now, here's where, he, where it's interesting. Here's where it's interesting. If you go through and look at Dak Prescott's career numbers and Josh Allen's, okay? Where we're told Josh Allen, bigger arm, better guy, and everything else. If you actually look at Josh Allen before he got Stefan Diggs, this is where, you know, Trayvon called him out and said, you weren't shit until you got Stefan, which is true. Because he looked like an average quarterback those first two seasons. But if you go through and you look at it, completion percentage in careers. Josh Allen, 63.2. Dak Prescott, 66.9. Yard average, we think about Josh Allen being the deep thrower. We think about Dak Prescott being the dink and dunker. Josh Allen, 7.2. Dak. 7.6? Perception versus reality. Yards per game. 242.7 for Josh Allen. That's a lot of yards. 258.6 for Dak. Touchdown passes. Now, understand Dak Prescott came in the league 2016, Josh Allen 2018. So Dak's been there longer, although... I, I should have looked to see how many games that Dak has versus Josh Allen because he did miss a lot of time because of the injury. Josh Allen, 163 touchdown passes. Dak Prescott, 194. But here's where it's really interesting because with Dak Prescott having two more seasons, Dak Prescott has 71 interceptions. Dak Prescott got killed for last year because of the interceptions. Josh Allen in two years less, has three more interceptions, 74. And as far as ratings go for their career, Josh Allen, 92.4. Dak Prescott, a 99. So please, I'm trying to understand where this big difference is where Jack, Josh Allen is considered such a better quarterback than Dak Prescott. If Dak Prescott has more yards per game, has a higher rating, throws less interceptions, has more completion percentage, how do we now look and say Josh Allen is the better quarterback? Because of one season, his team made it to the AFC Championship? One round higher than Dak? Is that really the only thing? Now, I believe the Cowboys, that this is not the same Cowboys team that we've been looking at. I believe that this Dallas Cowboys team is different. Now, you can go through, you know, like the talking heads will act like this Dallas Cowboy team right here, that these guys have played all of those 29 years and been the failures. That this coach, Mike McCarthy, who here has had one losing season, one losing season when he lost his quarterback for the year, but still was in playoff con you know, contention. That this guy is Chan Gailey, this guy is Jason Garrett, and so on. That this guy, Dak Prescott, who is on pace to own every Dallas Cowboys passing record, is Ryan Leaf. He is Anthony Wright, he is Quincy Carter, he is Tony Romo, he is Drew Bledsoe, he is um, Drew Henson, that he is all of those guys again and again and again, and he's not. That this defense is the defenses that we've had in 2010, 11, and 12 when we were going 8-8. Eight eight. This team is a different team, and I dare say this team, unlike some of the past teams 
that have been we are them boys and all we have to do is show up and people will fall down and and just you know worship us realizes that this team has to show up to win the games that this team is focused that this team finally has a kicker that won't miss four extra points in a game that this team has a quarterback who doesn't turn over the football that this team has a team that is healthy that this team has a defense that you don't have to protect by keeping them off the field that this team is a more complete team than any one that they've had that's my thought maybe i'm wrong but I believe that this team is different from those. And maybe, just maybe, we got a chance. And the thing that makes me feel good is everything that the talking heads have said negative about the Cowboys. Everything from Dak Prescott is a loser turnover machine. That Mike McCarthy can't call plays that the offensive line is shit, that the defense is soft, that they can't win against good teams, that every one of these negative things they've said, the Cowboys have crossed off the list. And then they just come up with new ones. And that makes me feel good that this team isn't wilting. Yeah. By the numbers, Dak Prescott's a better quarterback. Josh Allen can do incredible things. We've seen him have incredible games. He can run the ball and run over you. But he also makes boneheaded mistakes. And in any football game, you can take four plays, and I don't care if it's a blowout, four plays that can turn a complete game around. And if you're the one making them, you're not the reason you win. You're the reason you lose. Whew. Yeah. Sometimes things work out for you. I want to say, how crazy is it? I'm going to go back to one of those things that the Cowboys, that they said about the Cowboys. That getting rid of Kellen Moore with the highest scoring offense was stupid. Do you know as we sit here right now, today, the Dallas Cowboys are averaging an NFL leading 32.6 points a game. Now they told you, of course, that was just because they had bad teams that they played. Okay, well, two of those games were against the Eagles, a 10-win team. They also played some good defensive teams like the Jets, which have held people to next to nothing. The Chargers are averaging 11 points, 11 points less than the Cowboys. Now, people going to the season said Justin Herbert is a better quarterback than Dak Prescott. That Kellen Moore is a better play caller than Mike McCarthy. And yet, somehow, the Cowboys are averaging with Dak Prescott and Mike McCarthy 11 points more a game. Looks like my phone's going dark. So I've talked too long. As always, good people, tell the people you love, you love them, because you might not get the chance again. And I truly love you guys, and I love what I do. God willing, I'll see you tomorrow.